the Honda Urban EV. You might remember it. It was, hands down, the coolest concept car of last year. Perhaps ever. Nailing the retro-futuristic vibe and making me lust after an electric car for the first time. But the problem with making such an achingly good concept is the production car can't possibly live up to our expectations. Or can it? All right, you may be thinking, Jack, why are you hiding behind a wall? Well, it's because I wanted to share this excruciating moment with you. Behind there is almost the finished production version of the Honda Urban EV. I genuinely haven't seen it yet. I've genuinely got butterflies in my stomach because quite frankly, I'm terrified that Honda might have messed it up. Right, Whew, come on, let's do this. Rip that plaster off, come on. Oh, there it is. There she is. Wow. Drink it in, Jack. All right, wheels are smaller, arches are a bit smaller, sprouted another door. Let's have a look around the back. Oh yes, very good. Initial emotion, relief. Honda, thank you. Oh, my nerves are shot to pieces. I need to lie down. <laughs> Honda is calling this a prototype the Honda e-prototype to be precise, but Honda lies. It's actually 98% representative of what the finished car will look like when it goes on sale at the back end of this year. Price? No idea yet, but this isn't a low-cost car, much like Apple doesn't make low-cost phones. So expect to pay somewhere between 25 and 30 grand. Right, so what has actually changed from the concept? Pretty much everything, to be honest, to varying degrees. But don't worry, I'm going to walk you through it, starting at the front here, where we find a similar flush-fitting, full-width panel, the curvature of which is dictated by this front-facing camera and the LiDAR sensors in there. The headlights, you'll notice, are now full circles. In the concept, they were cropped off at the top, looked a little bit more aggressive. This is a slightly friendlier face. And here we have an illuminated Honda badge, which I'm told won't make production because it's illegal, because it's deemed to be an advert. Ridiculous, I know. Up here, yes, we now know what this black square on the bonnet is for. It's the charging point. Click a button on your key and that pops out. That's where you plug it in. Moving around here. Wheels, yes, you may remember the concept had 20 inch deep dish white multi-spoke wheels, looked a bit like Alpina wheels. They were fantastic, I fell in love with them. Surprise, surprise, they haven't made production, but these are a fair substitute. These are the bigger wheels, the 17s, 16s are standard. The arches, yeah, not quite as swollen as the concept, but they still stick out enough. This thing is wider than the Honda Jazz. Oh yeah, and there's a reason it's wide as well, because check it out, look, it's got cameras for wing mirrors, and the reason that it's wide is these sit within the car's width, so you're not gonna knock them off when you drive past a white van. Flush fitting door handles because of aero, hidden handles for the rear doors. You'll notice the whole roof is blacked out and the bottom of the doors are blacked out too. That's standard on cars. I actually remember the concept had a body colored rim that ran around the roof. Quite like that, so a bit of a shame, but no matter, I'll get over it. And round the back, uh, yes, the tail lights have changed from squircles to circles and it sprouted a roof spoiler up here. And that's about it, to be honest. And you have to say, within the constraints that they were working, it's a damn fine job. Time for some facts. Underneath is an all new rear wheel drive platform, so it should be fun in the wet. Range is around 125 miles on the WLTP cycle and it's rapid charge compatible. So an 80% top up in 30 minutes. Honda won't confirm the battery size or motor output yet, but something north of 100 horsepower seems reasonable. It will be offered with four seats and five doors only. There's no boot in the front, but a small one in the back, and it's 10 centimeters shorter than a Jazz. That's not very big at all, which might be a bit of a problem for some. Allow me to explain. I am a minuscule five foot eight. If I get in the back here with the seat in front set to my preferred driving position, well, as you can see, there's really not much wiggle room at all. But no matter, as everyone knows, back seats are for second class citizens also known as your kids. I, on the other hand, shall be lording it up in the front, which is where my assistant comes in here. Apparently I'm not allowed to touch the car. The paint's a bit expensive and he's got gloves. Thank you. Right, 
Just wait for the snooker umpire to close the door. Now the first thing to mention in here is that Honda wanted to make this thing have a living room feel. And I have to say, it does feel quite loungy in here. This fabric down here, that's recycled polyester. This wood here and right across the dash isn't wood at all. It's a special four millimeter thick film. And in the back, we've got four interior lights which you can switch on and off, just like your front room. The centre console down here, more wood, more buttons. One in particular that I'm interested in though, it says drive mode. Honda won't tell me anything about this, but what it does suggest is this car might have sporty intentions. But the main event is in front of us here, starting with this, a suspiciously production ready steering wheel, complete with some buttons here that suggest autonomous functions like radar cruise control and lane keep assist. And then we get to the great wall of screen. Not one, not two, not five, but six screens in front of me. The outer edges, those are the feeds from our aerodynamic new wing mirrors. Up here, there's another screen that's fed from a camera at the back with a special self-cleaning coating so it doesn't get caked in mud. Dead ahead, a digital instrument cluster, of course. And then we get to these, the two 12-inch beasts. Now, the idea here is that your passenger can actually make themselves useful. So they can change the radio station and change the aircon, but they could also look for something on the map and then hit a button that swipes the screen across to the driver's side, which is pretty nifty. I've also noticed something here called the personal assistant. Again, Honda won't tell me about this just yet, but I can only assume it's a Siri or Alexa style voice assistant. Oh, and get this down here, a quite extraordinary array of power outlets, two USBs, an HDMI input, a 12 volt socket, and look at this, a full on 240 volt plug. You could literally plug anything into that, a hairdryer, a coffee machine, all useful for shaving vital minutes off your morning commute. One last thing to mention is the visibility. Honda could have pushed the A-pillars forward and created something far more futuristic looking, but by keeping a fairly classic silhouette, the view out is perfect. And they've kept that hint of retro in the design. Okay, so there's good news and there's bad news. My concerns are that it might be a bit too small for big people, that that 125 mile range might put some people off. And if the price is too premium, people won't be able to afford it anyway. But the good news is I like it. Quite a lot in fact, so much so that I wanna buy one of these. So long as I can get a set of those concept car wheels.